Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, in this video today, I thought we could discuss how to clean shoes. This is obviously just one method. There are several ways of doing it. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use a uh, black pair of uh, chini boots, which is they are among my favorite uh, pair of boots. So I thought we we're going to use for this cleaning session. Um, Saphir Reno mat because obviously um, I have done some mirror shine on these boots before and I would like to make sure that there's nothing on the shoe uh, prior to condition them and um, shining them again so before anything is done we should remove the laces so that we have access to the whole uh, shoe tongue and all. Um, it's always important to clean those areas, even though uh, sometimes they're covered by the laces. Um, it's always important to do so. Okay, this is the product we're gonna use. And before we get going, the first step would be to uh, obviously um, remove any dirt that might be on the surface. It's always good to use a brush to do so. sure to uh, get the tongues as well this is because well we don't want to have any uh, piece of sand or any big chunk of debris that once we get rubbing the product against the leather we uh, tear the leather And I think that it's uh, also because we're going from big to small. So that is the big dirt needs to be removed first. This is a mechanical removal. And then we're gonna go with the chemical removal, which would be the um, uh, Renomac. Clean the surface, make sure everything's okay. At this stage, I could um, moisturize the lining but I did it last time um, so maybe I'll do it uh, one shoe at a time so the next step is adding the shoe trees that's gonna help help us straighten the uh, leather and the boot okay then with a rag we will um, add some reno mat let me uh, shake it first and the last leg of it I'm almost done with the product okay and this is how the uh, cloth looks before so you can see there is uh, nothing there so we'll add a little bit of product, not too much. And then we need to uh, gently massage the shoe. Do not add too much pressure because the idea is to remove creams and waxes that are on top of the leather. But you, if you add too much pressure, you might actually remove the uh, actual color of the shoe so if you don't, are not planning on re the shoe then uh, you know light pressure should be enough as you can see there's already dirt coming out <clears throat> so same process again uh, this is how it starts I make sure that I make an emphasis on the toe area because that's where the uh, most of the wax has been sitting you can see still more dirt 
coming out of the shoe. Third time. This is how it starts. Rather clean. I would say this could be done maybe two times a year, um, three times a year, depending on how much you wear the shoes. I wear these boots um, quite often, so I think uh, this would be the second time for the smooths, boots um, to get this treatment. I also get the uh, edge of the sole to remove old waxes and products. Okay, see, we're getting kind of similar results, so that means we still need to get going. Keep going, sorry. Okay, this is our start. <clears throat> there are other methods for doing this. You could mechanically by a heat with a heat gun or a hair dryer remove the waxes that's just that's just gonna be the waxes uh, to actually remove creams you do need um, to use certain products among the products that you could use are um, saddle soap uh, and there are specialty products also made from uh, made by other companies like Foot Black and Saphir that are specifically designed to remove <clears throat> um, products. Okay, at this stage, I think this is going to be. one for this yep <clears throat> and now I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and start tackling the other one again if you noticed in this one I started on the heel just to make sure that uh, if something was to go wrong, I would have noticed it immediately. But since I already did the uh, toe area, toe cap area on the other one, then I started on the toe cap in this one because obviously that's where more of the wax has been applied. But always start with areas that are more discreet in case you make a mistake, like the heel or the inner part of the heel. <clears throat> so that in case something happens then you can um, minimize the risk of doing damage in an area that is rather evident like the toe cap which being that these uh, boots are black I mean that you could easily redye them black um, but if you have a lighter um, shoe like a um, brown or burgundy, oxblood, acorn color. Yeah, those uh, you need. It. You really need to uh, be careful <clears throat> if you want to remain. If you want to keep the shoes with the same color. Now, if you, if you make a mistake, you can always go darker. But then again, you won't have what you started with. Um, Always mind the broguing, so try not to go against it, try to go with it. Also, the broguing was designed to uh, dissipate moisture when uh, the users of the shoe were outside. So those are the areas where sometimes moisture accumulate. So make sure that uh, you allow enough time for any product to uh, dry if you're using um, liquid products like in this case the Reno Mat. 
<clears throat> I will also suggest that you never start putting the liquid directly on the broke. Start on those areas of the leather where the leather is solid and it's not been punched. It hasn't been punched so that um, as you go through the broken area, the excess liquid does not accumulate there. The same applies for creams and uh, waxes because every now and then you do need to clean those broken areas, broke areas, uh, toothpick or uh, very carefully with a small um, screwdriver maybe even or a needle uh, you have to remove whatever sits down in those holes and accumulates Now, the advantage of using saddle soap is that you can actually get with the brush in these areas where it's a little bit harder to get. But since um, I decided to go with the Reno mat today, well, that's something that will be a little bit hard to achieve. Um, so if you have worn your boots or shoes and you have had a the welt um, exposed to dirt and you think that it's accumulating dirt then perhaps a brush with some saddle soap would be, would be a better way um, to clean okay this stage, I think, uh, is this good enough? I think I've removed most of the waxes. Well, most of the waxes, you can see I'm not picking up that much anymore. So I'm gonna go with the final pass on both boots. Let's go start with this one. Now I'll do this in a ventilated area because there has to be some sort of acetone or alcohol on this uh, reno mat and you can really smell the fumes. So please do this in a ventilated area. You're not breathing the fumes, which I assume are not good for your health. <clears throat> okay, we should allow the leather to sit a little bit according to this 15 minutes. So I'll allow 15 minutes. To uh, go by and then we'll carry on Well at this stage I have uh, damped the cloth make sure that you do it on an area where you had no product before and The reason for that is that we're gonna try to remove any excess of the product that might have remained on the leather so You don't want any of that to remain so make sure that you wipe the whole surface of the boot or the shoe so as to remove any uh, reno mat that I might have been left uh, behind. Some of the uh, volatile elements in the product should be gone by now but if it's a compound then there's other elements in the product so you might, might want to make sure that nothing is left behind. <clears throat> A 
Okay. At this stage, I had already started cleaning uh, the broken areas of this boot. I use a toothpick. It's a really uh, long process, but it needs to be done if you properly care for your shoes. So what you do is that you start with the medallion to, uh, and make sure that you remove from each of the uh, spots as much as, as you can in terms of dirt or waxes that has been or creams that have uh, been accumulating there and then combining with dirt and salt and whatever uh, element is on the uh, environment where you use the shoes or boots so you could use something uh, else like a uh, pencil or even a nail but I would suggest that you do that only in uh, extreme cases because you might tear the leather so a toothpick in this case a wooden one um, shouldn't be that tough as to um, tear <clears throat> the leather. Now this medallion has smaller circles and smaller circles. So on the biggest ones, then I'm gonna use this uh, toothpick with the cloth and uh, get it in there so that the cloth also helps remove any accumulated dirt. So this is how it starts. See, it's rather clean. Then, as you go by, when you clean, you can definitely see that there's some dirt there. Um, it's only natural. <clears throat> okay. Well, you will need <laughs> several toothpicks, so get yourself a little box and uh, get yourself working. Um, obviously you're not uh, forced to do this but it definitely makes um, the boot and those welts sorry and those brogans look uh, better because they don't get clogged victim of your own um, cause obviously if uh, like you, you have soft spot for brogues broke shoes uh, you will have to do this every now and then which personally I don't mind but you do need to be patient Okay, so these are the areas where most commonly uh, dirt is going to be found, uh, but you can definitely do this for the rest of the shoe. Now you do that uh, by inspection, you see where you can appreciate some dirt, like in this case you can see some wax here. Um, so I'll try to remove it. part of the uh, shoe shine service I suppose small details that sometimes people do not note or observe but uh, that you must do in order to make a difference I know that I have uh, always enjoyed showing the whole process, but removing dirt from brogues is something that I'm not gonna put you through for both sh boots. Um, so I already did this one, just uh, finishing this one now. But it's laborious, yes, but uh, like I said, I think it makes a difference. 
makes the final product though better. Okay, after you have done that, it's always, uh, it's always suggested that you come with the brush again to remove whatever dirt was uh, left on the surface. some progress here <clears throat> now the soles of these boots are uh, Chini's version of uh, uh, day night so you could actually do this with uh, wax and creams but I think it takes too much time and too much product so I'm just gonna use a uh, edge dresser to recolor uh, the edge of the saw here Make sure you cover the whole edge so that it is uniform. Be careful not to get on the upper. In this case, this is black, so it's not too terrible of an issue if uh, um, I were to touch the upper. But as a common practice, you want to avoid that because sometimes you have contrasting edges um, soles and edges uh, so you might have a brown shoe with a black sole or vice versa and then you cannot touch the upper because obviously that's going to create some issue <clears throat> now let me clean this i don't want to have any dry and then we repeat so get the double wet remove the excess don't want to have those uh, runoffs that look like uh, tears on the on the boot so you know obviously it saves you product make sure again to cover all of the um, edge and heel, edges of the sole and heel so that you have a uniform color now we just have to uh, wait for it to dry okay enough time has passed and the uh, uh, edges are now dry uh, I have already conditioned the insoles. I'm not going to show that. Uh, you have seen me done it before. So I thought I was going to bypass. And I uh, thought also I was going to show you today different ways to deliver uh, cream. Obviously, you saw that we uh, applied some of the Reno mats, so the leather need to be, needs to be hydrated again uh, to avoid cracking and, and, and expand its longevity. So... 
on most of my videos you see me using my fingers just to apply the cream some people might not want to use their fingers so there are little brushes that you can um, used to do so and I think right now would be a good time to uh, demonstrate how to do it. Now how I personally do it is that I use a small amount just like so and like I was commenting before make sure that you start on the areas where you don't have brogans where the uh, leather is smooth that way you don't accumulate too much uh, excess cream on those broke um, areas so just like so small amount small amount over here small amount over here and here and then make sure that you uh, distribute the uh, cream evenly now the advantage of using a brush is that you can get deeper into these areas where sometimes with the finger you cannot access um, plus you don't get your hands dirty if that's something that bothers you it's not something that bothers me that much anyway but uh, well some people might not want to have their fingers uh, painted with pigmented cream there's also uh, another reason if you don't know what's in the cream that you're using then you might want to avoid having um, that on your on your bare skin which is a valid reason so again small amount top, 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 top. <clears throat> now the downside of it is that it's a little bit harder to control uh, that is the amount that you're delivering so you might end up with uh, more cream on the shoe that uh, you'd have uh, delivered if you had done it with your hand otherwise so you know checks and balances I suppose you cannot have it all You can also use a cloth. A lot of people uh, use a cloth similar to when you're doing the uh, mirror shine. Just wrap your finger around the cloth and uh, make the application. Now, if you're using a thin cloth, then if you want to avoid the cream that in your fingers, I don't think that's the best method um, because most of the creams are wet. And if the cloth is not thick enough, then uh, you might just end up with some of the cream on your fingers regardless. Now, if you just want to distribute it evenly, then yes, it makes complete sense um, to use a cloth. Okay, I think uh, this one is done. Now note that these boots are black, but I'm trying to make the color a little bit more interesting and that's why I'm using uh, the navy blue you can totally use black I have black in here also um, but I just think that sometimes black and black might be a little bit boring I've been getting a lot of comments now that we're talking about uh, different colors of creams but why should people have someone else shine their shoes well obviously I do this as a hobby I do get shoes every now and then from viewers subscribers of the channel uh, first of all thank you for those that are uh, willing to let me work on your shoes there is an associated cost it's symbolic for me because all I want to do is uh, cover the cost of the products which leads me to one of the reasons why you consider you or you can, can consider having someone else brush your shoes first of all it's not that you have to um, you can if you want to first of all you help the economy there's a lot of uh, professional shoe shiners 
And from a more practical stance, you have seen me in this video so far use Renomat, uh, cloths obviously, um, creams. Uh, I use the universal cream for the lining. Uh, I'm using a little dauber here, brush. Um, so right off the bat, I have used what three products and uh, two pieces of uh, elements like brushes. So if you have a variety of shoes, let's say you have um, I don't know four pairs and they're all different colors. Sure, you can go with a neutral cream and then call it a day. But what if uh, you actually want to uh, keep the color throughout time? So you might end up needing to actually use colored creams. So that means that you would have to have at least one matching cream for each shoe. And uh, there's the complication that most of the sh uh, companies that make cream just cannot match the amount of colors that are out there in terms of uh, shoes. So you'll never have an exact match for all of the shoes in terms of creams. So you have to have a good stock of colors so that you, like you've seen on previous videos and other videos, you mix them and you have um, creams that are more resembling or more close to the actual color of your shoe or boot or boot so that means that you have to have a nice stock personally i think i have like a, i don't know 20 or so creams not from not all from Sophia because obviously there's a limit limited amount of um this medal dior which only means uh golden medal image um but I also have Brift, I also have Wood Black. And you need to make sure that the creams you're trying to combine, they're compatible with each other because they have different densities, different amount of uh, moisture concentration. So uh, it's, it, it, it can become a little bit tricky. So that would be another reason. Um, on my previous video on the John Log, I was also using a repair cream. So that's another thing, another product that you uh, could use so as you can see if you have a variety of shoes it could make sense just from the uh, point of view of the materials and the um, tools that you might need to actually consider uh, having someone do your shoes for you I'm not saying you have to I'm saying you could consider it and that would be among the reasons for someone to actually work on your shoes <clears throat> those are not all the reasons but some of the reasons that I think make common sense at this stage okay at this stage what we will try to do is remove the excess cream but before that see this is another specialty item um, it's unnecessary no but I'd like to do it uh, I'm gonna use a hard brush to again make sure that all those pigments and colors get into the leather This is a bore, um, which is like a ferro tape, I suppose, um, brush. The bristles are stiffer. Again, this is the difference of a stiff brush. You can see, I press, the bristles 
have little give. That's a boar. This is a horse. As you can see, I press it, and there's give. And again, little less give, more give. So each brush has its uh, reason for being. Okay, at this stage again, now we will remove the excess cream. Uh, let me find a spot here so that you can see that even though we try to control the amount, you always end up using more cream than you would, that you might need, but that's only natural. See, there's nothing there. Again, remember, especially in these areas, never go against the uh, stitching in the brogue, go with it. So as to avoid ripping stitching. So all of this could have left uh, a stain on your pants. That's why you uh, come with the cloth to remove this excess. Now, whatever pigmentation needed to be absorbed has already been absorbed. We try to push, push it with the um, hard brush, Puts colors into the shoe. <clears throat> So this is how it starts. And you can still see plenty of cream there. That was to be expected given the fact that I used the brush, which um, always carries more product than perhaps what you would apply with your finger. But that's just another way of doing it. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's good, it's just different. Again, careful with the broguing. starts see little amount here evidently you could bypass this stage and just give a thorough brush and then the brush will actually pick most of the excess but then again it's a more delayed method of doing it plus you have I think less control okay I think that's enough now because there's a few products do have some waxes on them those creams uh, we will pick up some uh, shine again without the laces so that we uh, pay some attention to this tongue area we will just go ahead and brush Which normally uh, 
how when you're doing shoe shines, you don't have to remove the laces that often. So you say uh, doesn't get treated as often. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just how, how it goes. So. like that we have uh, the commencing of the beginning of the shine process you can see dull this is shiny and this is a really interesting part how everything starts to become evident so if you ever only want to have one product I would say get a pigmented cream that gets close to the color of the shoe that you want to have. For one, it's going to keep the leather moisturized. Or at least the Sophia line has moisturizers, and then I cannot say that all of the creams in the market do. And it also provides a, um, sufficient shine if you don't want a mirror shine. So it's a what, three in one, you color, nourish, and also bring some shot. <clears throat> By the way, thank you for always joining these long videos of mine. I hope that uh, they are useful or at least entertaining. And if you have any suggestions, please, by all means, share. I try to respond most of them, if not all of them, on the um, YouTube. You can also find me on Instagram. Same handle, our shoe shine blog. This is ours, uh, yours and mine. So in, all, in order for it to be hours you need to have some active participation so please feel free to leave any comment positive if you identify any opportunity of improvement um, please just let me know what you think and uh, what do you suggest and uh, I'll try to respond and if possible make any suggestion a reality okay so as you can see we went from dirty and worn to relatively clean now at this stage we could add the laces but I think we should add a small layer of wax before to include those tongues and uh, protect the whole, sh the, whole sh the whole boot. Before I do that, I will also use the same brush, the little brush, to make sure I protect those welts um, so that in case they face moisture, water, uh, they have some protection in terms of, uh, in terms of wax. We don't need that much. Same principle, you cannot do this with your hands, regretfully, you, you need a tool, in this case in the form of a brush. In a previous video for the John Law boots, I did it with this brush, so the idea is the same. Just make sure that the uh, <clears throat> stitching in here gets protected.
especially these boots, as you can see, they have a storm welt, which indicates that the shoes were designed, were conceived uh, to be taken into the field. Most of the time, I just wear them on, in my office, so I don't know if uh, that applies, but I mean. <clears throat> Okay, now at this stage you can actually um, use cloth, the fingers, even a small brush to deliver some wax. I prefer to always use this uh, stage just by hand. So again, do not start in here. I mean, you can, I do not suggest it. Get enough wax and start in these um, smooth surfaces so that there is not excess of uh, wax and creams accumulated in the welts because we, as you already saw, uh, you do have to clean them every now and then. So again, see, I'm putting my finger here and then spreading wax. Small details, I think uh, they make the difference. Now, because this is the first layer, we will apply it to all Again, remember, I'm not against, but with the broken. Um, I was saying this is the first layer, so we will make sure to cover the whole shoe. That means that I cannot uh, lace these boots until the end because I don't want them to be matte because of the wax. So, Hope everyone staying safe during these uh, different times that we're living in. We're going quarantine and uh, having all sorts of complications. So please find those things that bring some normalcy to your life. And uh, enjoy those things. I think uh, like most of the tribulations we have faced as humans before, this too shall pass. If we just comply with what we are being suggested about keeping our safe, our safe, ourselves uh, safe, avoiding people as much as you can. By people, I mean do I do mean people you do not live with, you know, strangers, co-workers, which are not strangers necessarily, but that you don't know what they are about the whole day. So keep the distance, appropriate distance. Um, if you are asked to wear masks, please do so. Remember that you might be healthy, but the reason for the masks is not necessarily to keep yourself healthy because, um, you're not an island, but you might be asymptomatic, carry the sickness and spread it to someone that might be susceptible. And because you don't know it, uh, you, you might spread it. That's why I, I think um, we are being suggested to wear masks, not for ourselves necessarily, but also for everybody else. Also think about that uh, if you are susceptible and someone is wearing a mask and you have to be outside supermarket or in the bank whatever if that person wears a mask and sneezes or coughs or even speaks to you then the risk gets uh, reduced of the pathogen to be transported from them to you even if they are symptomatic um, so it's just common courtesy, if you may. Again, smooth areas, spread the wax, touch those uh, 
broke areas after you have spread um, the wax. add a little wax to the rubber sections yes it's not gonna take as much as uh, the leather soles but still a little bit it's not gonna be detrimental I thought I was gonna use the neutral but I think black is going to do the trick. Okay, at this stage, because I had already applied some wax to the tongues, and then I need to come back with the um, brush to make sure that it gets polished and no excess is left behind. Long strides. By the way, tell me what do you think about uh, these videos and this setup, which I try to use as much as I can when I know we're going to have a sunny day so that I rely on natural light instead of artificial light. So whenever you see the black, I mean the blue drop back and back, that means that I'm uh, using artificial light. but I think that nothing beats natural light um, so whenever I know we're gonna have a sunny day I'm gonna try to rely on the sun as much as I can that obviously presents a challenge because sometimes I don't have time to make the videos at the most convenience of times but when possible I hope it adds value to you okay this one is done I think I'm gonna add a mirror shine to this pair of boots. I think I did it in a previous video. So I think I'll bypass it to the basic shine. It's good enough for me today. in this boots again
See, even when I uh, used the brush, I still ended up with uh, pigments in my skin. It's unavoidable. I don't mind it anyway. Okay, so we're almost done because we touched the boots. I would suggest that you give it another pass with the brush, especially in these areas where the laces were placed. And now, give me a second. <clears throat> always thought that um, a brush with a little bit of moisture definitely helps bring out the uh, most of the wax so get the water put this one to the side and do the last cup the process just like that these boots I done so I hope uh, you enjoyed the process I know it was a long one but I think it was worth it thank you very much have a good day